Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week. We're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we're starting this week off with not a knife. But I see knife. There is a knife attached to what I'm about to show you, or maybe it's vice versa. Uh, knife Center exclusive Lynch Northwest Pocket Clips for the Buck 110 Slim and, sorry, the Slim Pro and the Slim Select. Here it is. They're very cool. Titanium kind of eliminates the big wide pocket clip that these knives originally came with and gives a more uh, kind of conventional deep carry pocket clip. This is the stone washed version. It is $24. Uh, we also have polished. We also have satin finish. We also have blue anno and gold anno and fade anno where it's blue down here and purple in the middle and gold up top. And actually my personal favorite, my favorites are probably the stone washed, which is the least expensive or the blacksmith finish, which is a really rugged blackened finish. Uh, that one's like $28, it's a few bucks more. I, uh, I picked up a Lynch Northwest blacksmith finished clip for my little native slip joint. I'm very fond of it. Very cool. Looks really nice, fits the knife's character really well. Uh, the gold one I think especially looks good on the, uh, the green version of the Slim Select. 110 or 112 Ranger, it will work on either of those models. The Slim Selects, like I mentioned, the Slim Pro, I'm talking the original Slim Pro with the pinned pivot. Uh, it will work with that, the pinned construction overall actually. The Slim Pro TRXs, it will not work on those. That is a, a different whole pattern on those. So keep that in mind. But pretty cool. Nice transformative thing on the knife right there. Uh, don't know what much more to say about it other than neat. So that's what that helps. So, 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 so say it's neat and I hope that helps. Those are in stock now, you can check them out. Uh, you can also get, if you don't have the, the knife to put them on, the uh, Slim Selects right now, I mean, like, just over 30 bucks uh, for the 110, I think. I should know this, shouldn't I? Maybe. <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? Buck Slim Select. Fortunately, we have this excellent reference over here. It's called knifecenter.com. Link in the description. There we go, now it is loaded. 32 bucks for a 112 Slim Select and uh, 34 for a 110 Slim Select. Not a bad uh, way to get into about a $50 package there, maybe $50, $60 package, made in the USA clip and made in the USA knife. Not too bad. Next up, speaking of made in the USA, uh, dropped earlier today, this is the Benchmade Mini Claymore, available in two colors, we have the Desert Tan Grivery, which actually has a bit more, almost looks more like a, the Ranger Green that you see on the, uh, the bug out model there. We call that Ranger Green. But there's also a, uh, a black handled version. And it takes the successful bits of the full sized Claymore, which was designed to be the strongest lightweight auto that they make. Meaning keeping the handle light, this is the uh, you know, injection molded material without doing anything that would sacrifice strength. You've got nice robust liners in here. They only go on this one anyway, on the mini, go back to the first pin, but it's this nice, or sorry, first uh, backspacer, but it's this nice wide piece of metal there. And like I said, it's the same recipe, just scaled down. 207 bucks for these. The blade is three inches long. It is a great drop point shape. Uh, CPM D2 steel with a cobalt coating. Now I have to have to mention every time we, CPM D2 comes up, it's not the same as D2. It's I know it's easy to get the two confused because both have D2 in the name, but CPM D2 is a powder metallurgy version of your run of the mill D2 and it changes the character of the steel very, very much. You're still gonna get really good edge retention like your standard D2 will get, but Metallurgically, all the big hard carbides that give regular D2 its edge retention, those take away from the toughness. So the particle metallurgy version here eliminates those, shrinks the carbides, makes it way tougher and way more suitable to, I mean, abuse, shall we say, than your less tough standard D2. Have I explained it? I hope so, I hope that helps. Really cool blade. 
Right here on the front, we have in Morse code FTE, front towards enemy, which comes from the Claymore mine, which draws its name and kind of some of its design inspiration from. We have a safety switch, which will keep the blade from firing when it is actuated. Blade fires great once you engage it, that, and then that switch also works in the open position. So if you're you know, really pushing this hard and you're worried about maybe accidentally pushing that button as you're twisting the knife or pushing the knife through a cutting task, that will keep it secure, keep it less likely to have anything happen to it. We've got a deep carry pocket flish with the uh, pocket flish. What's a flish? Uh, it's a pocket in a set of waders. I'm not even sure what words mashed up to make that. Anyway, deep carry pocket clip. It is reversible for either side. Not a left hand biased lock, of course, but still very usable left handed. So I, I like that they maintained the ambidextrous clippiness to it. There you go, it's a technical term, look that one up. Also, new right now, just dropped the SHOT Show edition of the Benchmade Bailout. The 2023 SHOT Show edition, which means they're only making it this year. Uh, it's not gonna be available in the future, unless right, we did have a closeout on the 2022 SHOT Show knife from last year, uh, because Benchmade, I guess, hung on to, found some in some way or another, and we were able to help kind of blow them out to you folks. That may happen next year, you never know but I wouldn't count on it. These are available right now. Now, what I like about this one particularly is we have an uncoated blade, which hasn't happened on a bailout so far. I do own one of the M4 bailouts. I like it very much. It is a coated blade. I am more of an uncoated blade person in general. So here is an option there. About 292 bucks for this. You've got uncoated 3V for great toughness right there, which is a great match for this thinner blade stock here. Usually you think of a big tough steel like 3V as being good on bigger, choppier, heavier knives, and it certainly is. But thin blades like this can really benefit from the added toughness that 3V, bring, 3V brings to the table too, because it has a little bit more strength for its relative thinness, but you still get to enjoy great slicing geometry. And it has that too, because you've got an almost full flat grind. The handles are the aluminum, not the uh, injection molded here, paired with blue accents on the thumb stud, backspacer, and bail, and no uh, glass breaker on the aluminum bail on this one, unlike the green aluminum version with the M4 blade that does have that. Really great. The action though, right out of the box, has been fantastic. Benchmade's been doing a really good job with that lately. Deep carry stonewashed clip to kind of match the uh, stonewashed finish on the blade, not the exact same look, but similar vibes there. Very, very cool. Excellent little strong knife with great cutting geometry. Speaking of strong knives, Southern Grind is kind of back in action and we have some new stock right now. This is the Bad Monkey, their flagship knife with, on these particular versions, an Emerson Wave pocket deployer, which is really cool. 260 bucks for this Jade G10 version with the Tonto blade. There is also a black G10 version of this. There's also a drop point version of this available in both handle colors too. The blade is about four inches long, Sandvix 14C 28N steel. Great toughness for a hard use knife. Actually, toughness is a bit of a theme uh, starting out here. I didn't even intend that uh, with these first three, uh, first three knives. First one wasn't a knife after all. Uh, first three knives here, also all made in America, which is cool. Liner lock, this is a washer-based pivot, which is a bit of a rarity in more premium knives these days. You've got you know, the Sebenza, you've got the Spartan Harsey folder, you've got this, not too many other things out there. The pocket deployer works great. I was using it earlier, very, very fun. And then you got the nice, smooth, kind of fluid opening of the, that the washers help provide when you want to just open it with the thumb studs. It's a little less flickable, flickable for me. Maybe I just haven't quite found the right angle on it. Let's try again, let's embarrass myself here. Yeah, see, not quite, don't quite have the right angle personally. Nice subtle pocket clip, it's a little wide, but it's not too tall, so it's got a very different presence than most things. Single position in this case. Everything though, built just super, super solid. I love, the uh, kind of style of the Tonto blade shape right here. It's got a little bit extra going on to keep things interesting. 
If you're not uh, carried a Tonto day to day, it can be pretty fun. You can use that front leading edge for some uh, pushy, chisely things that can be quite nice. Next up, the BRS Replicant is back. Uh, this is the standard model, four and a half inch, 154 CM blade. The handles are standard titanium, stonewashed with black G10 overlays. It does come with a latch, but it is not installed right out of the box. It is in the side of the package right here, which there is the nice bright green package as well. Kind of signature feeling color for BRS. Action on them. I'm always a little nervous flipping these things because I'm not an expert flipper and I don't want to drop them on the knives on the table, which could go away towards like explaining the awkwardness of my flipping here on camera. On camera. Very cool. They feel great. They are a bit more expensive than they used to be. Unfortunately, prices have gone up. They're about 380 bucks right now, but the quality is fantastic. It's a great option for flippers that want something nice and fluid. The blade has got a cool signature style, but it also works well for flipping. You've got the crown spine to keep things comfortable. The pivots, they feel nice and fluid as well. Just excellent. Kind of a, a standard bearer. The standard replicant being a standard bearer for flipping action. Uh, if that's too much money for you, I got a, uh, a less expensive ballast song here for you. It's $235, but you're getting about half the knife too. <laughs> this is the Heed Industries CFX Premium Micro Balisong. We've got a two inch blade, 20 CV blade steel, which is kind of cool actually to get that upgraded blade steel, even though it's in a you know, smaller package overall. I don't know of anywhere where you might need a two inch blade in particular for legal reasons, but if you do, it's kind of a fun option for that actually. Uh, titanium handles, these are blue anodized, but we have several colors available right now. The flipping action, I mean, I'm not an expert flipper, so asking me to flip a tiny ballast song is just kind of hilarious. So there you go. Did that work? I guess. We need to like hire someone here, here who actually flips well. Seth's getting a little better, but he, he's, we, we need like an Well, expert. he's got three tricks, whereas you've got two. I've just got the two. <laughs> really the one. It's just, the second one is just the same thing, just upside down. Yeah, we're trying to be generous here. <laughs> but they're really cool. Uh, smaller than uh, even the pictures led me to believe. So just like the, the novelty factor here is just off the charts. Just very, very cool. Next up, we have new versions of the Actinon Verba A100. Now available with MagnaCut blade steel, which means MagnaCut's available in the Czech Republic now. Very, very cool. $184 for these several different uh, version or different colors available on the GRN handle scales there. Really cool shape overall to those handle scales. While we're talking about the handle, check out that backspacer right there. Has a nice pass-through design. We've also got a deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible for either side. Appreciate that because the rest of the knife is also ambidextrous. You've got the crossbar lock here with the signature kind of red dot, red button on there. Action feels really good. You, you have a single thumb stud, but it is reversible. So you still have the, uh, the ambidextrous capability, just not at the same time. Does that technically make it ambidextrous? Or does, it, mean? does it make it set upable for either hand? Hmm. Ambicable. I mean, yes, I'm splitting hairs with semantics, but that's kind of what I do, so don't worry. But the other cool thing about the thumb stud is it glows. You've got the little glow in the dark pip there in the center. Blade itself, also really cool. You've got a black coating on the MagnaCut. You don't need that for stain resistance, but it is to kind of maintain the look of this knife, keep the, uh, the flashiness down a little bit. Great drop point shape for everyday carry. You've got a really cool swedge here behind the tip, leaving the full thickness at the tip for a little more strength, but removing that point of drag along the spine further back along the blade. So as you're pushing through, you might get a little more efficiency, especially if you're angling or, or curving a cut through your stuff. Really, really cool knife. Always been a fan of this knife. It's even cooler now with the MagnaCut steel. It is everyone's favorite steel, of course, because not only is it incredibly stain resistant, alluded to earlier, but it also is also incredibly tough and has great edge retention too, which is a combination you don't usually see in a stainless steel, those, those super high marks in both categories, which is really cool. And for those who aren't wondering, 64 Rockwell is 
the target on this knife. So they're, uh, for the people who are uh, sticklers on where they want their hardness of the MagnaCut, this will definitely treat you right. Next up, some new fixed blades, some more 3V steel on the table, which I always like to see. Uh, this is the Phobos Knives Alaris. This thing's kind of right up my alley, really. It's made in USA, it's 300 bucks. It's got a five inch 3V blade, stone washed, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. This is a really tough package overall. I think it's priced appropriately, especially considering what you get. And you folks know me, you know I like a little bit of food prep characteristic in my camping knives. You got a little bit of that here with this nice dropped edge. You could do a little bit of cutting board work with it, but even if that's not at all kind of what you're considering when you're looking for your outdoor hard use survival knife, this thing's still gonna be an awesome package still, regardless, very, very cool. We've got a high flat grind, so even though you've got a thicker blade stock here trying to keep the, uh, the sliciness at a respectable level, and I think this should do it quite well. Micarta for the handles, black in this case with red liners. We've got a bunch of different colors on the website. The ivory is really cool too, and you can get that with a stone washed or a black coated blade. The ivory with black actually looks pretty striking as well. Removable handle scales, and I love what they did with the bow drill divot in the handles here. Sometimes you'll see a little cap kind of embedded in the, uh, the handles so that you can use it as a bearing block. Now what I like what they did about with this bearing block, if, first if you're unfamiliar with that, make sure you install the sheath, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but if you have your bow drill primitive fire starting method, you need to push your spindle down with something up here, and it can be a rock or a seashell or something, or you can have it in the handle of your knife. Now some folks will just kind of mill out a divot in the micarta and leave it as such. Sometimes you'll see a little metal bowl kind of popped in there, but in this case, they've actually used the tang of the knife itself. The hole in the micarta goes all the way to the tang, and then there is a little divot dished out of the steel there and on both sides, which is pretty cool. Do do that with the sheath installed, however, for safety's sake. Here it is. It is Kydex. You have a drop loop here with a pull the dot snap for dangler carry options. Sorry, there we go. It works, believe me. There we go. You can do it that way. You've also got holes and slots here on the side, which means pretty much any kind of aftermarket uh, attachment system will work. Tech locks, mummer clips, uh, ulti clips, T clips, you name it. They're all gonna work quite, quite well. The other thing we have here at the back, we have a protruding pommel or a protruding tang. It is pretty broad, so you could, you definitely have a lot of clearance for kind of poundy, smashy tasks you might need. It's not crisp anywhere along here, so if you're looking for a space to strike a fire steel, uh, you might, would have to mod this to make that work. I dig it. The ergos are pretty good. My middle finger does kind of sit in the pocket to the, uh, the bow drill divot there, but it's not uncomfortable. Got a nice pinch grip going on. The weight is appropriate given its you know, other dimensions. Good stuff. Next up, we have another Phobos knife. This is the Calcula. I keep, any Futurama fans out here, I keep wanting to call this knife the Calculon. But this is the Calcula, uh, 291 bucks. Uh, 4.3 inch blade, S35 VN in this case, and a bit more of a nimble knife than the Alaris for sure. I mean, that's more of a bruiser given its size. This is a little more nimble. Interestingly, you have a, you know, the look of a thumb opening hole right here, which makes me wonder, were they kind of designing this as a folder at some point? Maybe there's a folder in the works. Huh. Doesn't it kind of look so, like so? I don't know, you tell me. Uh, S35 VN, like I mentioned, great stone washed finish on this one. Micarta handles. This is the camo Micarta. Also red liners there. Also several colors available on the site. We've also got the nice protruding pommel there at the back. Or, sorry, protruding tang. I keep saying it wrong. Again, not crisp anywhere. So if you want a fire steel striking spine or anything anywhere, you might have to mod it yourself. Really nice. Ergo is also really good. Pinch grip is great. I gotta say, I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, the original Phobo stuff that came out was good, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they're, they're stepping up uh, their game. They're, they're hitting that next level, I think, with these couple of designs. Kind of broad jimping there on the spine, not super sharp, but plenty grippy. Same deal on the sheath as on this knife as we had on the Alaris. It's Kydex, you got the dangler with the pull the dot snap. If you're unfamiliar with the pull the dot snap, it's only 
going to come loose in one direction. There's a little extra bit of uh, folded metal there in the inside so that if you're pulling it sideways, such as if you're walking through the brush and you happen to snag it on something, it's not likely to come loose on you. But last thing you want is to lose your knife after all. Very, very cool. This would be a great compact survival knife, great just all around outdoor knife, hunter, you name it, dig it. Let's take a look at some more US made stuff. Uh, these Phoboses were a lot of US made stuff on the table today. It's pretty great. Part of why it is a fairly expensive episode this week. Apologies for that. Uh, but check out a couple of the Olamic Wayfarers we just got in stock. The uh, Wayfarer 247. The cool thing about uh, Olamic and what they do with these knives is every single one is a little bit different. They do different things. There's not quite a, a standard configuration or standard model. They just like to go nuts, do cool stuff, which is great. This one right here has a blade I haven't seen on this knife before. It's sort of a modified Warncliffe. They call it uh, the Cutlass Blade. That's kind of cool. Great, great shape to it overall. S90V blade steel in this case, three and a half inches long, high flat grind. This one has sort of an acid washed finish going on. Really, really slick. Looks great against the bronze anodized titanium frame lock, uh, standard pocket clip with lifters here on the back and a ball bearing for the retention point. As far as opening goes, we've got ball bearings in the pivot. And in addition to that thumb stud, which is pretty prominent, which is movable too, as you can see, you also have that flipper tab for that kind of thing. Really, really nice. I dig the uh, kind of handle angle here points, helps you point the blade down a little more naturally, use the tip a little more precisely in some cases. Very, very nice. Something uh, different in character, we have another Wayfarer right here. This is with the Mouflon blade. I'd call it a modified sheep's foot. Uh, prices on these, $7.45 for that first one we looked at, $6.95 for this one. Uh, there are some less expensive versions right now, but again, like I said, each one is essentially a one-off. S90V steel again, so great, great edge retention with both of these. Again, three and a half inches long. Again, with dual opening methods, in addition to the flipper tab, you've got a thumb hole, which lets you do that reverse flick a little bit easier than you know the stud on the other one. Check out the titanium handle scale here. They have a name for this frosty titanium because it looks kind of like, you know, snowdrops or snowdrops, snowflakes frosting together, which is really cool. We've got bronze anodized accents all around. Maybe I should put something other than bronze because there's a lot of other really cool characters or cool colors in our recent batch. The backspacer matches it. Kind of a rustic -y bronze thing on the pocket clip over there. It's just fantastic. We've also got another model here. This is the Whippersnapper. This one is uh, actually quite expensive because the materials on this one are really, raw material wise, more expensive. This is a $1,245 knife right here. Uh, 2.8 inch blade, dense twist dama steel on this kind of modified sheep's foot. Gives me a little bit of uh, CRKT Pilar vibes a little bit if you uh, want a very, very premium take on that style of knife. Here's where things get a little kind of crazy, but not too crazy but you can see where a lot of the, the money went here. Titanium bolsters integral to the liner and zirconium inlays all with this radial jeweled finish that just looks so, so good. Floating backspacer here again, pocket clip again with lifters here, no ball bearing on this one. Just absolutely fantastic. We've got the bolster style frame lock here. We've got the thumb hole for middle finger or thumb opening. You've got the front flipper, which works excellently, even for clumsy folks like me. And then you can even index finger flick it quite nicely. Check them out. Like I said, these are just a couple, three, in fact, of our recent Olamic batch. You got to check them out. Even if they're, they're beyond your budget, just go look at them on the site. They're just super cool. And give in to temptation. And give in to temptation. I don't want to. I don't want to recommend people be irresponsible. If you can't afford a thousand dollar knife, like me, I can't afford one either. Don't buy one, please. Get the nine hundred dollar one. <laughs> Just go look at them. Just go look at them. Um, a couple knives that are a bit more affordable this week. 
Uh, we have some new case knives in stock. Here is the first. It is a mini trapper with the bird's eye maple handles. I showed uh, the uh, one of the canoe knives from Case in this bird's eye maple a couple weeks ago in our FAQ, but I realized I hadn't shown them in the new knives video yet, so had to do that. It's a really cool handle finish. I especially like the back cover on this one. It's bird's eye maple, so you get kind of those nice, very cool natural imperfections in the wood and dyed black in this case. It's almost like a like a graphite look, in fact. Really sweet, and I always like seeing a Warncliffe blade on a trapper. I'm so used to seeing a, uh, a spay blade paired up with you know the long California clip point style blade as the other one. I just dig seeing that Warncliffe. Adds a kind of a different dimension of flavor to this mini trapper. And yeah, just a, a very different cutting experience, very different cutting characteristics than you would get on the clip point blade. These are stainless, true sharp stainless with the high polished finish, which is of course Thomas's favorite because it makes it so much more fun to photograph, but they look super, super classy. Love that. We've also got several new green synthetic handled case knives. Now I'm very familiar with the uh, kind of vintage yellow uh, synthetic. In fact, it's one of my just personal favorites. I love the, uh, the look of it, even though it's not exotic. It's the first time I can remember seeing this green. Pretty cool. Uh, did I mention the price on this previous knife, the mini trapper here? 70 bucks for that one, US made. Uh, this one right here is $58 for this knife in this handle material. And this is a medium stockman, which means two small blades. You have a sheep's foot and a small spay, and you have a larger clip point. And on the medium stockman with case, they like to use this kind of muskrat style blade on it. A little bit narrower, a little bit more precise than some of the big broad clip points you see sometimes. Again, offering another cool flavor to the knife. Very cool, green synthetic. Green and gold always looks good too. So you get the brassness shining off against the gold. Really, really dig that. All right, next up, let's end with some fixed blades, shall we? Uh, this first one is from Dragonfly Blade Works. We have a small quantity of these right now. It is essentially a, uh, a reimagining uh, of the classic uh, Marine Corps Hospital Corpsman Bolo. Reimagined here as the Dragonfly Blade Works USMC Jungle Bolo. And John Kaufman, the guy who is Dragonfly Blade Works, essentially acquired one of the, uh, the originals, the World War II uh, kind of clearing tool that the Medical Corps especially used, and made a one for one copy and went out to beat on it and realized. It was kind of a kludgy tool, actually. Certainly very strong, but not very uh, kind of, not as effective as we might consider optimal these days. And most of that was down to just a crazy thick blade. So he basically just took the shape, started making versions with different blade thicknesses, and eventually settled on 1 8 as the way to go. At that thickness, you still got effective chopping and hacking with it, but it's not gonna tire you out in quite the same way. Because if something's gonna tire you out, it better at least be super effective. And he found with the original, it kind of wasn't. So here you go. A uh, few of these, decent price on them too, actually. And they come with a sheath, $315 for it. You've got an 11 inch blade, 8670 carbon steel, crazy, crazy tough stuff. And I love the blackened kind of Caswell finish we have on this one here. It looks super, super awesome, like a properly apocalyptic. And with that, we've got white oak, yes, quarter sawn, quarter sawn white oak handles. They're nice and comfy, they work well, help you harness the power of that blade. You got a forward lanyard hole, nice, and nice other little modification right here. Love that for safety, because you, know, you wrap the lanyard down around your wrist here, which means if you drop the blade, it just kind of hangs out. It's not kind of wildly flailing around. As far as usage, you've got that nice broad tip. You could do a little digging with it that was often used for that originally, kind of clearing and digging, you know, not knife work in particular, but they needed kind of a one tool option at that point. You do have a swedge along the back here. It's not sharp, but it's a pretty narrow cross section. So if you wanted to put an edge on that, I bet you you could. Uh, the sheath likewise is a, even more so, then the knife is a recreation of the original, as I understand it. Same kind of pattern and hardware going on. Nice, rugged leather, fits the knife really well, both utility-wise and in its character. 
Oh, one last thing to mention here. You do have a crisp spine on this knife. So if you're using this as your, uh, your big bush crafting chopper, you could use it as a fire steel striker if you wanted. So speaking of kind of tactical things, eh, I don't know. Would the jungle bolo have been tactical if it was not really used by frontline troops? It was used by kind of just as a tool more than anything else, even though it was military, would you call that tactical? I'm not sure, sound off in the comments. But we do have a tactical fixed blade here. It's a new version, new color essentially of the Hogue FX, sorry, EXFO1. Very cool knife, Alan Alishowitz design. This is the seven inch bladed version, A2 steel, nice and tough. I guess that's the theme today. There's exceptions to the rule, but US made and tough. There's a lot of that on this table right, right here in front of us. Very, very cool. But I love this tan Cerakote, kind of gives it a new character. Usually not much for blade coatings, but I'm kind of digging this. Uh, I've mentioned that before, I'm more of a satin, satin finish guy, uh, or non-coated, I should say. We have G10 handles, some nice colors to match the blade there. A couple of lanyard points here at the front. You could use that for lashing in that quote unquote survival spear scenario. Although I always say use that to like cut something down. Don't actually throw a stick with your knife on it because you might not get the knife back. Keep that knife. A couple lanyard points at the back as well, protruding tang, not sharp, but comes to a point. So you can really concentrate force with the back of that. And then kind of the signature element of these knives, you've got embedded in the handle scales right there, the tool that you would need to remove those removable handle scales, should you wish for cleaning or modification or otherwise. Kind of a nice little trick right there. Feels good, steel's nice and thick for great toughness, decent edge geometry for a combat knife. Honestly, most combat knives do not have decent edge geometry for actual cutting and slicing, but this one is one of those nice exceptions to the rule. It is thick, it's 3 16 of an inch. You've got kind of a two thirds height flat grind. Not a super slicer, but very capable nonetheless. Sheath, we do have one, here it is. Kind of typical survival tactical style sheath uh, that is kind of the established thing right here. It is nylon, you got two retention straps here at the front. No pouch on the front, but you do have this molly webbing so you could easily add something to it. You do have molly straps with snaps here on the back, both at the top and at the bottom. These also act as a belt loop if you want, you would like to carry it thusly. Basically the name of the game is plenty of options to suit what you need. And last but not least, we have Elchete, new versions of this behemoth tops chopper. 12 inch blade, believe it's 1095, yes it is, high carbon steel, quarter inch thick. It's a beast, it is a beast. 230 bucks for it, midnight bronze blade coating in this case, canvas micarta handles with green, red, and black. If you can't make up your mind, you get all three essentially right here. And a bow drill divot in the micarta, like I was talking about uh, before with that Phobos knife. It's a, another way of doing it here on that top knife right there. Very, very cool. I've never gotten a chance to like really use one of these knives in anger or with aggression, shall I say? I should do that one of these days. I should, I should reach out to Tops or something. Just, man, it wants to hit for sure. I may mod the handle a little bit if I were to do it. I might remove a little bit of this point, but I'm nitpicking here. It's a tops, which means it's built crazy well and it's gonna work crazy well. Sheath, it has one, it is Kydex. Spine draw design right here, carefully David. Clips in, you've got a strap here. Is that pull the dot snap? Nope, just a, uh, well, is that actually? Oh, it might not be branded, but it is a one-way snap it looks like. So I do see the hardware in there. And there's a version with a, uh, a dangler uh, for carry as well as the rotating clip. So pick, which one, pick whichever one you prefer and take it out and go to town. Crazy camp smasher all over. Like this would be great. Chopping, batoning, prepping firewood, just feeling awesome. That's what the El Chete will do for you. Or at least I think that's what it would do for me. But that's all we have for today. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, you can also check out the description box below the video. We'll have links there that will take you to knifecenter.com. 
And while you're there, always remember, we've got our Knife Rewards program, which means when you're buying one of these knives, you get to earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.